Hi everybody, Greg Wilkins, back here with you with another edition of The Daily Pause, a devotional of positivity and encouragement for Tuesday, July 18th, 2023. I pray that you not only have a very blessed day today, but that today's devotional will also serve as an encouragement, a motivation, and an inspiration for you, and put a smile on your face as well. If you enjoy this episode of The Daily Pause, hit that like button down below and feel free to share this devotional episode with anyone you feel may be blessed by it. And catch more episodes of The Daily Pause by checking out my Facebook page, The Daily Pause, my YouTube channel, Greg Wilkins, and follow me on Twitter at GregWilkins78. There, I would love to hear your comments and your comments about this episode or The Daily Pause in general. And feel free to leave um, devotional topic conversations that you'd like to see discussed as well as birthday and anniversary shout outs for your friends and loved ones that are announced at the end of every devotional as well as submit your own um notes or video for a daily pause including your own encouraging words that you would like to share you can leave those there or contact me on facebook messenger by email at glwilkins78 at outlook.com or text me 864-860-1522. Once again, I hope you're having a very blessed Tuesday. Stay cool out there. It is hot, 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 hot. So stay as cool as you can out there and have a very blessed day. And remember that God loves you. God cares for you. And God will always be there for you. Let's get started with today's devotional entitled The Power of Testimonies. Now, we've all seen the court cases and TV shows, whether it be from court TV or 48 hours or 60 minutes or or Law and Order. Pick a pick a <laughs> pick a series uh, from Law and Order. You always see some court procedural drama or some real footage of court stuff where you see people testifying to information that they know about a certain case, a certain subject, a certain topic that may help in the overall issue that is on trial at that moment. And if it's not for the the impactful words of their testimonies, the evidence alone would not be just enough. They got to have somebody to corroborate that evidence, somebody to put those things into context. What what does this evidence mean? What does it mean from that from the account of somebody who's real, not just some empirical data data that was just presented because data can be conformed and twisted and manipulated to meet anybody's uh, uh, way of thinking. You can manipulate any kind of data to fit your perspective. That's the power of what testimonies are. Now, testimonies don't just take place in a court setting or a deposition setting. Whenever we speak to somebody, we're testifying to something. Whether it's, ooh, it's a hot day, and then, ooh, I tell you what, yeah, it is hot. I woke up this morning, it was 48 degrees, but then then, then two hours later, it's already 86. Man, I, and, and I'm sweating as soon as I stepped outside, and I had to go back inside and grab a cup of water because it was just too hot. That's testifying to what you know about the temperature, that you're testifying to somebody else how hot it is. Now, that information may give them the, the wherewithal to either stay inside or to remember to stay hydrated when they go out or to not stay out as long because the heat is oppressive. That's a testimony. And we and we see all the commercials on TV. We see all these, one of the ones I see or hear a lot, especially on the radio, I listen to, to Sirius XM a lot. And I hear a lot of the Optima tax relief commercials. And they always have somebody who's talked about, well, I was in debt $75,000 and they, they, they foreclosed on my house. They were, they put a lien on my, my home and my checks. I was in trouble, but I called them and, and they helped me relieve my, 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 my issues for $2,000. It was this easy as one, two, three. I just had to call the number and they, they testified to the account they were going through and what they did to remedy it. And a lot of people use Optima tax relief for that reason. And there are many other things that on TV and testimonials or whatnot on all throughout media. And like I said before, what we speak about, the information we speak about is a testimony of sorts to what our accounts are to that particular thing, including gossip. Gossip is a form of testimony because it's it's testifying to something we think we know. We may not have all the information, but we're going to say what we're going to say. We're going to say what we think we know. It may not be true, it may be false, it may be whatever. We're going to testify to what we know. And it's up to the other person to believe what they hear or not. And more than likely, 
it's it's believed because it's spread around. That's why gossip spreads around so fast. That's why people buy cars because of the word of somebody else. That's why people buy products because of the word of somebody else. Tourists go to certain places and go to certain restaurants and go to certain sites because of the word of mouth of people who live there that they testify to whether that place is good or bad to go to. So there's power in testimony. And it made me wonder, with all the power of testimonies and all the ways that we share information and confirm what we think we know or what we do know for a certain without a doubt about all the things going on in this world and all the things that are going on in TV and all the products and all the things that we buy and purchase and all that kind of stuff. Why do we as a body of Christ not testify more about the goodness of God? about how he's impacted our life for the better, how he changed our lives, our lives, our hearts and our minds as he's taken us from things we used to do and he's put us into a better place. And while he's helping us day by day by day, we leave less, more and more of that stuff behind and taking more and more of him into our lives and how that's changed our lives, how it hasn't always been easy, but he's been there with us every step of the way. Why do we not testify about that more? A couple of theories in my head. One is sometimes we don't want to impart too much on people. We don't want to uh, push on people too much, which is true. I'll often say on this devotional, you can't really testify to the goodness of God by smacking somebody over the head with the Bible and condemning them to hell before you even know who they are or what their situation is. You can't force yourself on somebody. My, my pastor, Apostle Willie Rooker, has always taught us and always implored on us to reach somebody where they are, not expect somebody to be where we are because we don't know who we, what they're going through. Just have a conversation with them. Just be friendly. Just be, have a conversation with them. And when the time arises, introduce your testimony to how God has helped your life be better at the right place at the right time and in love. It's because God introduced himself to us in love. So why do we not do the same thing to others? Another reason that pops into my mind is just that sometimes we just don't believe what we hear anymore. We, we have got so selfish and it's all, I, I'm, all, I'm all out for me. I'm out for me. You better get yours. I don't care how you get yours. But you just leave out and get out my way. And sometimes we get in that form of mind. But we all have been through something. We all have a testimony to share with somebody how we've gone through something. We may not be able to reach everybody. But we'll reach someone because someone's watching us. Someone's watching us. And that's another thing. We've got to be mindful of how we carry ourselves and where we carry ourselves. If we're going to testify to the goodness of God, but then talk about our brothers and sisters behind our back, someone's not going to believe that the love of Christ is in us if we're so willingly talking about any and everybody just like that. So we've got to be willing to live the changed life that we speak about. And we've got to be able to exemplify the testimony in which we exude, which is why it's so easy for us to believe gossip, because we we sometimes re, we we act out the gossip we live, what do we speak about? We act out those ps, 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 ps moments that we talk about because we so quickly talk about each other, and that's why there's so many people in the world just rather give up than to be encouraged. But yet and still, the world is still hungry and starving for an encouraging word. They're still starving for something that can bring them out of their misery, out of their calamity, out of their chaos. And we have the answer within us because Jesus Christ has changed our life. So why are we waiting for something huge in our life to testify about? Like I said on yesterday, the mere fact that we are able to wake up to see another day is a testimony in and of itself. May the day go great? No, but it doesn't mean that the day doesn't have purpose. It still doesn't mean that you won't be able to reach somebody and just bless somebody with a smile, bless somebody with a pat on the back or a hug and say, hey, I've been thinking about you. I hope you have a blessed day. That is encouraging. And then you can encourage them, oh, wow, oh, why you have a great day? But well, I was able to get up this morning and you're able to get up this morning. We able to just to share that goodness with somebody sharing that goodness is testifying to the goodness of the Lord. That testimony is powerful. The Bible tells us they overcame them by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimonies. And they did not fear their lives unto death. I'm paraphrasing that, but basically it means they overcame all the calamities of their life. They became all the shortfallings of their life, all the enemies that came after them by the blood that Jesus shed for us and by testifying of his goodness of how he changed their life. Not worrying what's going to happen to them because they got to get that word out. And, and that's another thing. When Jesus has really completely changed your life and your heart and your mind, it gives you that urgency 
to want to bless somebody else so their life may be changed for the better. Not through us, but through Jesus Christ. Not us, but that Christ that lives in us. So I encourage you, let your testimony be a light for somebody else to be encouraged and drawn to the Lord. We are supposed to be the best representative of Christ on earth. But sometimes we go out of our way to fit in. The FOMO thing, fear of missing out. We don't want to miss why everybody's laughing over there. We don't want to know what they're talking about. So we'll sometimes we'll compromise our own morals and our own life just to be able to fit in and hear what they're saying and just to commit, uh, enter into their conversation. But what are we entering into that conversation? What are we testifying to? What are we testifying to? Like I said earlier, what we, what we speak of is the knowledge of what we're going through. What experience are we testifying to? What goodness are we testifying to? We all speak and have debates about how this world needs to be better and how the people in this world need to do A, B, C, D, E, F, G to be better. But are we living the testimony that, that we're talking about? Are we living those discussions that we're talking about? Are we sharing those things that we're standing about, that, we, that we talk about that we need to be changing this world? What better way to change this world is to, than to introduce to the people of this world the person that changed our life for the better? Jesus Christ. You don't have to be a, a preacher behind a pulpit or a doctor in theology to share what God has done for you. Nobody knows what God has done for you better than you. So in your own words, in your own way, share what the Lord has done for you with somebody. You never know if somebody is going through something similar or just going through something, period. And your encouraging word, how, Lord, how the Lord has brought you out may be the very same thing that ask and for them to seek and ask the Lord to bring them out and change their lives for the better. That is the power of our testimony. So let us be mindful as a body of Christ to stand up as a united body, not as a divided body. We spend so much time bickering and moaning and complaining about what the Baptists did, about what the Pentecostals did, about what the Lutherans did, about what the Catholics did, about what such and such did, about what non-denominationals did, what the AME church did, about what they did or did not do. We're so busy bickering and competing with each other that we don't realize that we're all on the same tide and that we all worship the same Lord and Savior. The one that delivered and saved us all from something. Let's get about testifying of what he saved us and delivered us from. And get to sharing the world, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ with this world. That brings us to today's feature song. It's a beautiful song by Benita Jones. And it's written by Chandler Moore. It's, it's entitled, Stand and Proclaim. She says in this song, there's a name that can change and say, that, that, that changed my life. And there is there is a name. And there is no other name than Jesus. So stand and proclaim that there's no other name than Jesus Christ that can heal you, that can deliver you, that can save you, that can change you, that can transform you, that can take the hard calluses off your heart and renew your heart, that can take all the negativity that's been living in your mind rent free for how no, however long and clear your mind and help you live on that path and give you the wisdom and the strength and the peace to daily throw that stuff down and keep renewing our minds and keep glorifying God every step of the way. It's up to us to share that good news. He charged us to go out in the world and proclaim the gospel to every creature, to everywhere. We start at home and then we go out, we go out, we go out. Would everybody here? No. Would everybody understand? No. But that doesn't mean we got to stop. There's somebody out there that we are able to reach. We've got to go and share our testimony with them. Continue to stand and proclaim what the Lord has done for you. I've said many times how the Lord has delivered me from a diabetic coma at the age of 12, from insurmountable odds of a blood sugar of 2,320. I'm not supposed to be here right now. I am not supposed to be here right now. But the Lord saw fit to touch my body. And through being in and out of the hospital from the age of 12 up to now, from surgery after surgery after surgery, from two kidney, from from two kidney transplants, from an amputated pinky toe, from an amputated pinky, to many corneal transplants, from losing my vision and everything, I am still here. And because I am still here, I may not have all my vision, but I'm still here. I may not have a, a, the great balance that I used to have, but I'm still here. And what I'm able to do, I'm going to share how the Lord has continued to bless me through all my 45 and two-thirds years of life. Have I been perfect every step of the way? No, 
Not at all. If I made mistakes, absolutely. But because of his grace and mercy, I am still here. And I'm here to tell you because he loved me through all of my junk and all of my garbage and all of my turning my back on him and all of my doing, trying to do things on my own. He loved me still. And he still loves me today. And he loves you just the same. And I will continue to share how he's loved me and how he loves you with anybody who's willing to listen because that's in my heart. I can't see somebody else in a negative standpoint and not share and have an encouraging word with them and share how the Lord has brought me through some depressing times, through some aggravating times, through some frustrating times, through some lonely times. He'll did it for me and he'll do it for you. We got to continue to stand and proclaim what he's brought us through. If we want the, the world to see that light, we got to let that light shine in us. So I encourage you, Continue to stand and proclaim what the Lord has done for you, how the name of Jesus has transformed your life for the better, and how he's continuing to transform your life for the better. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for who you are in our lives. We thank you for being that example for what love is, what love truly is in our life. Lord, we ask you to continue to give us the strength and the peace and the understanding of how and when to speak to each other on this planet, how to love each other on this planet, how to share your love with each and every person that we see in the name of Jesus. No matter how they respond to us, continue to show that godly love to them because you show it to us throughout what we go through, throughout what we've said and what we've done. You continue to show that love to us. So let's continue to show that love to any and everybody we meet. Lead us and guide us in the way that we should go. It's not about us. It's not about us getting glorified. It's not about us being magnified. It's not about us being put on a high pedestal because we brought such and such in. It's not about us. It's about you. It's about sharing with this world the greatness of you. It's about sharing to this dying world the hope that is in you, Lord. So we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the part of our devotional in which we have our birthday and anniversary shout outs. And on today, I want to wish happy birthday to Jessica. To, uh, yeah, that's her name. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Jessica McCullough. And happy birthday to Echo Dalton. Jessica and Elko, e Echo. Lord, I'm having mercy. I'm in trouble with names. For happy birthday to you both. And may God continue to bless you with many more birthdays and enjoy your birthday on today. Once again, you can send in birthday and anniversary shout outs, as well as any encouraging words that you would like to, to be a part of this devotional, either in note form or in video form by sending in to me, by leaving it down in the comment section below or reaching out to me on Facebook Messenger by email or just text me. That information at the beginning of the devotional. Now, I hope you had a very blessed day. Thank you for watching today's today's devotional. I pray it's a blessing and an encouragement for you. And I hope that you are going to be blessed today. Once again, stay cool out there. It's going to be another hot one. So stay as cool as you can and be blessed. Continue to love each other. Continue to be safe. And remember, every day there is always time to take a pause. Lord willing, I will see you again on tomorrow. Enjoy today's feature song. Stand and Proclaim by Benita Jones from the 2018 EP, The Evolution. And it's written by Chandler Moore. I hope it's a blessing to you. And may God continue to cover you, keep you, and increase you in all that you do, say, and think on today. Thank you for watching this edition of the Daily Pause Devotional. Take care, God bless, and I love you all. Today's feature song starts right now. Stand and Proclaim by Benita Jones. God bless. a place I can run and be saved. There is a name that can heal, calm my storm, peace be still. I can call on that name and be saved.
and Jesus.